Now the next component of of this uh, uh, cloud stack is the communication protocol. Now, what are the different communication protocol that we use? So generally, we when we see this particular diagram, we know that the communication program uh, protocol is related to TCP/IP, right? And TCP/IP, the standard protocol uh, we use for the for today's world, every PC, every computing device which want to communicate uh, in the form of uh, network or in the form of wide area network or uh, local area network, they will use the technology called TCP/IP, or they will use the stack called TCP/IP stack. Apart from that, what are the different protocol that we can use in cloud computing that we are going to see here? So the cloud computing arises from services available over the internet, uh, communicating using the standard internet protocol suit underpinned by HTTP and HTTPS transfer protocol. So generally we use this HTTP or HTTPS transfer protocol in the cloud computing to connect with. The other protocol and a standard that expose compute and data resources in the cloud, either format data or communication in packets that are sent over these two transport protocol. So whatever uh, standards that we'll use, it will be over this HTTP and HTTPS protocol. Now, the next requirement is in order to engage the inter-process communication, that is IPC processes. Many client server protocol have been applied to uh, distributed networking over year. Various form of remote procedure call implementation attempt to solve the problem of engaging services and managing transaction over what is essentially a stateless network. The first of the true web-centric um, remote procedure call technology was HTML, sorry, XML uh, RPC, which uses platform independent XML data to encode program calls that are transported over HTTP. Now it says that um, we, we need to do inter-process communication, that is IPC. Now what is inter-process communication is? Now this HTTP and HTTPS will use, let's say we have the web server and uh, we want to connect uh, the, the, the platform that we have taken with the help of HTTP or HTTPS. So we'll just put the, we just connect our, um, uh, our uh, laptop or our computing device to the internet and just put the URL. So the, where the URL is hosted, it is hosted in the platform, uh, the cloud platform. Let's say we are, we are uh, going to let's say netflix.com right so netflix is there in the uh, there in the aws web server right so it is there in the aws web server and we can use that particular facility by http or https right now uh, apart from that uh, the inner services which is which is going to communicate with each other that will be communicated with some inter process communication protocol and here we use remote procedure call. Now, uh, the technology that we'll use for remote procedure call, call is XML remote procedure call, that is extensible markup language remote procedure call. And uh, that is the internal, uh, uh, the protocol that will run over HTTP protocol. As internet computing become more firmly fixed over the last decade, several efforts begin to better define methods for describing and discovering services and resources. The most widely used message passing standard at the moment is the simple object access protocol. Now we have another uh, requirement which is called message passing. Okay. So first of all, uh, we can connect our web server through the HTTP or let's say HTTPS. Then we have another way, like uh, we can, that is the one example, like when we have hosted the um, web application, let's say we are not hosted the web application, we want to use our services. 
services of the of the cloud computing platform so we have another protocol which will run uh, which is called uh, tcp ip of course and in that under underlying that we we have this um, secured uh, 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 secured connectivity which is, which is uh, given by ssh that is uh, Okay, so uh, apart from um, uh, HTTP or HTTPS protocol, we can connect the uh, connect the uh, cloud computing with the help of SSH uh, protocol, which is the secure uh, shell in which we can connect to any uh, Unix based uh, system. Okay. Uh, now here it is uh, talking about, let's say we want uh, the message passing uh, phenomena. So for that, an, a protocol is used, which is called simple object access protocol, which essentially replaces XML remote procedure call. Uh, SOAP uses XML for its message and use RPC and HTTP for message passing. So SA, SOAP forms the basis for most of the web servers, the web services stack in use today. So most of the web services are uh, using this uh, simple object access protocol, which is running over or the top of RPC and HTTP. There are several standard uh, have uh, emerged as allow the discovery and description of uh, web-based resources. The most commonly used model for discovering and describing used with SOAP messaging is the web service description language, which is called WSDL. And this WSDL, a worldwide weight consortium internet standard. So this is the standard uh, uh, description language, which will be used along with SOAP. This uh, word uh, web service description language lets the web service uh, advertise itself in terms of a collection of endpoint or port associated with a specific network address, which is URL. And that can be addressed using XML message to provide a service. So we have SOAP service and this SOAP service is using web service description language to fulfill the requirement related to the web services. Over the year, a variety of uh, platform specific uh, remote uh, procedure call specifications must uh, such as DCOM, which is distributed common object model, and COBRA, which is common object resource broker architecture, were deployed to allow software component that run on different computer to interoperate with other one another. So to, to communicate with the, the software component, which is running in, in one virtual machine, could be communicated with DCOM and COBRA architecture. REST stand for uh, representational state transfer, and that is assigned a global identifier to a resource so that, uh, so there is a uniform method for accessing information resources. The identifier is a URI expressed in HTTP form given a resource then at a known address various network client in the form of what are called user agent can then communicate with that uh, resource using HTTP command or the request to 
exchange information in the form of document or the file. Typical data transfer might use XML, text, an image file or JSON document or some other standard or agreed upon format to perform the data exchange. Now here it says that there is a concept called representation, uh, uh, representational state transfer. Now what will happen here is this representational state uh, transfer uh, concept will use the global identifier. And this global identifier is for the resources. So what it will do is it will give a one resource a ID, which is a unique ID, which is called unique uh, URI, that is unique resource ID that has been given. So with the help of HTTP, we provide the unique resource ID to get a unique resources that we require. Okay, and uh, we can transfer the data with that, any type of data like XML, text, image, or any JSON, which is Java script object notation document. Also other standards and uh, any, any type of platform that is agreed upon can be used using the REST standard. So the data transfer will be easier uh, using HTTP. So underlying platform or underlying protocol is TCP IP. Uh, on that, the HTTP, HTTPS is running and uh, there is SSH which is running in under the TCP IP uh, protocol. Under HTTP, we have other different protocols. So the first protocol that we have seen is XML RPC, which is X, uh, XML, uh, that is web-centric uh, remote procedure call. Then we have uh, a simple object access protocol, which is again will be used uh, for the message passing concept. And this SOAP is using the web service description language, which is a standard again. Then for the for the software to communicate or inter uh, operate with each other, uh, they can use DCOM, which is distributed common object model or Cobra uh, model or the Cobra architecture, which is common object resource broker architecture. Then we have a concept called REST. REST will allow us to, to transmit the, the data, specific data uh, based on the specific identity or a specific uh, global identifier that will be assigned to the resource and that is called unique resource identifiers uh, identifier or unique uh, resource identity so with the help of that and top of it we have the http of course to call any type of resources and that resources it might be or that this data might be in the form of XML might be in the form of text, might be in the form of image, or might be in the form of JSON format or any other format which is agreed upon, right? So these are the different communication protocol that has been widely used in cloud computing. Then we have the application, right? Although the uh, cloud uh, uh, computing stack encompasses many details that describe how cloud are uh, constructed, it is not a perfect vehicle for expressing all the consideration that one must account for in any deployment. An important gap arises from the nature of distributed web application and the design of internet protocol is a stateless service. So as I told you, uh, the cloud computing uses the stateless service. The in internet was designed to treat each request made to the server as an independent transaction. That's why the stateless, stateless services will be, uh, will be adopted by the cloud. Therefore, the standard HTTPS command are also atomic in nature. Let's say we have get and put commands related to HTTP which is uh, get is for the reading data and put is for the writing data and so on. So all these commands are also atomic and all those commands are also independent with each other. So the application that will use, which will follow the stateless service property of the cloud service 
uh, and uh, which will be applicable uh, related to the cloud. Okay, so 